Packmaster Shayek. It's been a while since I've seen you guys face to face, but here we are for this Before You Fuse. This is now coming to us July 4th. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into his kit, talk about my opinion, uh, opinions, opinions on him, and then we're going to go ahead and look at what other people are saying. I haven't really looked at his kit yet. I kind of skimmed over it. If I recall correctly, he's going to incorporate a lot of beasts with him, but yeah. So let's go ahead and do this. His A1 attacks one enemy with a, let's see, let's, this looks like it books up to 50, 60, 70% chance of placing decreased defense for two turns. Then teams up with any ally, Terror Beast, Gore Mask, uh, Hound Spawn, Hell Fangs, Fell Hounds, and Stitch Beasts. Why are the S's like not blued out also it kind of bothers me and i think all of these skills that he has incorporates some form of quote-unquote benefit if you have any of these guys with you the allies joining the attack will use their default skills so off the top of my head i'm not really sure but Terror Beast, Gore Mask, Hound Spawn, Hellfang, maybe Hellfang, I'm not really sure, I don't remember, and Stitch Beast don't really do anything for me. I've been using them as food for the longest time. But Fellhound, I've talked about this before. I've done a few videos where I at least mention him. Maybe I might have shown him in a, in a few streams where Fellhound can solo 12-6 or 12-3 in six seconds maybe faster i think i saw somebody with four seconds i'm not sure but fellhound can smack the other champions here the other rares and the one terror beast epic i'm not sure what they do but i guess that could be pretty cool i'm thinking maybe an arena team but it's kind of hard for me to you know postulate anything i think somebody in my discord talked um talked about hydra but we'll see Removes all, oh, this is A2, books down to a three turn cooldown, removes all debuffs from this champion and heals by 50% of their max HP. So we got a removal of all debuffs, then a heal, then a shield, two turns on this champion, equal to any surplus heal. It's protected as long as one of these champions is on the same team. team. Then places a taunt debuff with a reflect damage on this champion for two turns, can't be removed if, again, one of these champions is on the same team. So we have a protected shield and a reflect damage with a taunt. All protected on his A2. As long as you have one of these guys with you. His A3, Blood Howl, will fill the turn meter by 25%. Also has a 100% chance of placing block buffs on all enemies for two turns. But it can't be resisted if one of these champions are in the team uh, in the team with you in the team with you sorry i don't know where that accent came from this books down to a three turn cooldown okay so we have a turn meter fill which is a little bit less than arbiter arbiter has a 30 percent turn meter fill the block buffs on all enemies could be nice especially if irresistible i could see that having legs in hydra when attacked places hex debuff on the attacker for one turn ally attacks on targets under a hex placed by this champion deal 20 percent more damage again i could see this having some application in hydra hex is a very important debuff especially in hydra not only does it allow you guys to smack the head of mischief to be able to aim down on the head of mischief for those of you who don't know there's this head called the head of mischief i think it's like a 85 percent chance for you if you try to aim down and single target that head for you to get redirected somewhere else it could be very annoying unless you just have a bunch of aoe attackers having this hex again this is a passive so whenever he's attacked the attacker is going to receive a hex and then said hydra head or any champion that attacks pack master is going to receive 20 percent more damage with that hex i don't know what this passive 
is going to uh, require. Like, I don't know if you're going to need like 400 accuracy for this passive to proc. I'm assuming yes. Otherwise, uh, it would have been stated, right? I'm assuming you need accuracy. I'm almost like 98% sure you're going to need accuracy for this one because otherwise it would have said uh, can't be resisted. Something to that effect. Also, when this champion is attacked, all of these champions are going to counterattack with you. So right now my mindset is Hydra because this kind of screams Hydra. It some some form of it screams Hydra for me. Then we have a 19% boost to ally speed in all battles. It's pretty solid. Now, what do I think about him? He's force affinity, he's HP based. Off the top of my head, am I going to go for him? I don't think so. But then again, I'm already doing everything that I could possibly want to do right now. I'm not going to bother saying it, but literally anything you guys can like ask if I can do. Okay, hold on. Let me stop you right there. With the exception of 100%ing Centranos, I can do anything. Place Plat, Hydra, blah, 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 the whole nine. There's nothing that I'm going to want to do that's going to make me want to go for this champion right now. This is with my first initial impressions. Realize You guys need to realize that opinions can change. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong. You know, it's human to think one thing and then change your mind later. I think it becomes a problem if you're... if. I think it became, it be, what am I saying? I think it can become a problem if you're unwilling to change. I'm willing to change if you guys can change my mind. But as it stands right now as an end gamer, I don't really see any benefits to this. I already have multiple arena teams to help me in live arena. Should I wish to do live arena? Um, to place plat, I can already do that. To farm arena, like it's PVP, I don't really care. Hydra, I've got my teams. I'm putting up billions of damage on full auto while I'm playing Elden Ring. You know what I mean? And this isn't to brag or anything, because I'm not. I'm honestly not like the best player out there. I'm. I'm very lazy. All right. I worked hard to get my teams to where they are so I could be lazy and do other things. I say this to express to you guys my mindset when looking at whether or not I personally, singularly, only me. I'm deciding whether or not I want to go for a champion. So for me, am I going to go for this champion? I'm, I'm not really convinced. I think I'm going to take two week, another two, another two weeks off to skip it and enjoy more Elden Ring and work on my other channels. Now, who would this champion be for? Who do I think this champion could possibly benefit? Off the top of my head, if I wasn't doing Hydra too well, I'd probably go for this champion, right? And let me, ex let me explain. A lot of this kit here synergizes well with going up against Hydra. Decreased defense, protected shield, protected taunt, protected reflect damage. That's pretty nice. This is on a three turn cooldown. The more turns you, you get him to, to take, um, the better. Why is taunt important in something like Hydra? Well, when you're going up against, well, any head, really, but specifically against the Head of Mischief, you can make it so that if you build Packmaster Shayek with enough resistance, I think like 4 or 450 resistance, this works all the way up to like Nightmare with that kind of resistance. Of course, you can drop down depending on where you're at. But you can basically make him a Mischief tank. I'm pretty sure. I haven't tried this, so correct me if I'm wrong, as always. But if you can keep Taunt up, that means the Hydra Heads are going to always want to attack Packmaster. Now, I do believe you're going to have to have him go fast enough so he can keep that Taunt up as often as possible. Because it's a three-turn cooldown, right? So, yeah. There's that. The protected buffs is also a really nice thing to have. Of course, you could still be 3 percented, so that might be an issue. Turn meter fill. That's a, another thing. This is on a three, it's books down to a three turn cooldown, I believe. 
this also makes it so that your entire team goes a lot faster the block buffs makes it so that your opponents and right now we're thinking only about hydra uh can't place any buffs and if mischief happens to three percent it and steal your buffs and this block buffs is on then it's not going to apply it's not going to spread if the head that places reflect damage or all those buffs on himself the head of wrath tries to buff himself it's not going to happen if he tries if the other head tries to place reflect damage with the ally protect it's not going to happen the only time that this might go through or not work out the way you want it to is if the head that cleanses the head of cleansing removes the block buffs and then something bad happens like the head places uh the poison smog cloud thing then it could go wrong and then you'd have to wait like a few turns but yeah hex is hex is obviously going to be its own thing we just talked about it but what is the downside to this particular build now again i'm about to say something but keep in mind you need to keep it with a uh, take it with a grain of salt because i don't know too much about a lot of these champ uh, other champions these other beasts i don't know much about them and I haven't looked at their kit, except for Fellhound, who I'm assuming is going to be a damaged, uh, damage dealer. I think maybe if you're struggling to do normal and hard, this champion might help you make a team, a full auto team, to get you that one key that you're looking for for Hydra. Now, enough about what I'm going to say. Let's go ahead and talk about what they're saying in my Discord. Um, let me see. Da, 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 da. My boss, my clan leader, says, I think it's a good one to grab just in case. Another guy in my clan says, it's also ally attack, so the entire team of dogs would be a full counter attack on every hit, every time he's hit. And a lot of these Hydra heads do AoE hits. So the entire team is going to be counterattacking and i think there could be value in that a full counterattack does sound pretty nice now that i'm reading his statement and i'm guessing the counterattacks don't count as turns so turn attack events whenever we do fire knight or ice golem turn attack or dragon uh, spider turn attack a uh, turn attack that could have some play doom tower waves might be interesting he says it's kind of like having venus cupidus with a full team of dogs, he says. Yeah, I could see that. And again, I don't know what these champ other champions do other than Philhand, so, you know, you're going to want to check that out. Now, let's go ahead and look at what Lord B4 says. Packmaster Shag Fragment Fusion. It's a frag fusion starting July 4th. He lists all of the skills. Talks about his um, descriptions here. I voted as undecided. There are a total of 627 votes here currently. Like, I'd say like a good majority of them, of these people, are kind of leaning more towards the side that says, I'm not really feeling this champion, I'm probably not going to go for him. But then there's also a decent portion of people, players, who are decidedly considering going for him. We have 93 good, we've got 31 excellent must-haves, that's over 100 people out of 627 who are probably going to go for him. 121 of them might be on the fence, and I think it's safe to say... Oh, uh, sorry, 129 plus 100, so like what, almost um, 250, a little over 250 people or players who voted on this are kind of on the fence about it. 130 and uh, 123 are more on the side of... Like, we're not really going to do this. Yeah. Let's see what everybody has to say. And forgive me if my math is wrong. I, I'm all over the place about it. Naive Warthog says, Woof. In the past, they've done guaranteed events for fusion partner champions. Alton was winnable from some tournament. My wife got Alton, Alten, um, and Oella. And I never got to use them together. So, you know, that's kind of, you know. Kaja from the deck. Kaja and Timid are a fun pair to use. I don't use them often, but they're still fun and cool to have. Al score with Jetney the Giant, it's okay. I've beaten every Al score Jetney team I've come across. Cupid as Venus, 
is one of the S tier, uh, what do you call it, couples that I can think of in Ray. Wouldn't it be surprising if they dropped some sort of event to acquire a brand new legendary Hound Chan that will pair amazingly well with the fusion? That's possible. That's true. It could be. The difference is we were made aware of the partner champions before they entered the game. But the counter argument to that exact statement is you never know because Polarium likes to do a lot of things without telling anybody, including the content creators. We knew there would be a champion named Kaja when Timmit was announced because she was mentioned in his skill descriptions and she was also in the trailer. No new champion is mentioned in the skill descriptions of this guy. It's odd, but I agree that they are hinting at an upcoming dog champion in the announcement. The timing lines up. Adeline, Adeline free login ends July, or July 9th, and typically when one ends, another one starts behind it. What are the odds there's a new legendary hound that can be earned in the new clan wars? That's the only way that makes sense, that any of this makes sense. Yeah, you know what? Uh, listening to a lot of people, it could be a thing. It might be the case. You never know. If they do this, I hope they tell us before this guy drops. They're telling us in the last paragraph to take it to the bank. What last paragraph? Oh, so this is... Let's see. By the way, if you're not impressed with this, with his current roster of loyal hounds, just wait. Packmaster Shayek is always on the lookout for new members to add to his pack and who knows what beast will join his side next. Yeah, I could see that being a thing. Does it change my mind about whether or not if I'm going to go for him? Not really. Again, there's there's nothing new in Raid for me to do. As as jaded as that is, there's nothing new for me or you know, there's not there's nothing really unattainable for me that I care much for right now. But yeah, again, if you're not convinced or if you're on the fence, maybe consider that last paragraph. Maybe consider what these people are saying. The other thing is I've had a lot of people say to me like, hey, dude, if there is a quote unquote free legendary champion for you to obtain, you might want to go for it if you have the resources. It's, it's, it's always better to have the option to say you did rather than to say you didn't. It's better to have the option than to not have the option, which is true. A lot of people, for an example, uh, not a lot of people, maybe a couple people are like, oh, Burrito, how come you didn't go for Wixwell? I didn't need him. Yeah, there's infinity comps, but it doesn't really like affect me, and I don't think it's gonna affect me here. Could be wrong, but but still, I'm not, I'm not like crying about it or anything. They're telling us in the paragraph, maybe, but more likely, Polarium is putting BS out there to get more people to burn resources on a mediocre champ. The last one had poor participation, and this one looks like it'll be the same. That last paragraph is Polarium just trying to justify doing the fusion. It could be a thing. It could be a tactic. There's everything to lose by this being a lie, and a ton to gain by it simply being the truth. If they put their money where their mouths are on this, you are going to be stricken with FOMO every time. <laughs> you're going to be want to be. You're going to want to be stricken with FOMO. You're going to be. I can't fucking read. Every time they want to pull the stunt going forward, you might have a point. I may reconsider this fusion. First in, uh, instinct was the past. So was it for me. Still kind of is. But I'm going to rethink it. One thing I notice is that he will have a partner with Adeline login ending July 20th. It'd be the perfect setup for a new login probably going to be a lego a lego hound speculation but it would make sense hell hades has a video out that suggests strongly suggests another dog being added they're going to do this where can i find the video i'm curious around the 610 mark just watched it and to save people uh the watch if they choose to he did not suggest this in any way shape or form he just points out this is a fomo champion he thinks the team comp required is too mimi he thinks the kit is not brilliant and the only reason he wants to do it is because another dog might make it good. Too long didn't read FOMO champ with a novel idea. But there's no insinuation that there's going to be a champion. You know, that gives me a, a good thing for me to um, really harken back on. 
Where's uh, the, oh, that's me and my wife. Oh, it's over here, my bad. Yeah, um, the thing about Hydra, right? If Or any team, really. If you're trying to make it so that, because a lot of, all of these skills only require you to have at least one if you're going to want to, you know, receive benefits from, you know, his uh, synergy, whatever you want to call it. But that's also one spot that could go to somebody else, right? Like, for an example, would I put in Fellhound versus Acrisia? No. No, I wouldn't. Y you know what I mean? Now, that's a very, you know, out there idea, but you guys get the idea. Uh, hence the memeiness to it. That, uh, the way that the blur from Polarium was written is highly suggested. Of course it is, but that suggestion wasn't it's the next champ, only that future champions could be dogs. That could easily be as next month or 12 months from now, which is why this is a FOMO champion. What's up with all the fusions being Force Affinity? That's like fourth in a row. You know, uh, a while ago, back when I first started Raid, everybody was complaining that there were too many Magic Affinity champions. Like, all the champions were Magic Affinity and, and um, people were just complaining that there wasn't enough Force Affinity. And now that we have more Force Affinity champions, people are complaining about it. People are just gonna complain. Gonna see what they, uh, what the new Hound, gonna need to see what new Hound they are adding and if it will be attainable before really understanding this fusion, I think. Yeah, we had three magic affinity, then four, expecting three spirits next or a void to finish the year. It's an interesting kit. I, oh, where'd he go? I suppose he's got some good things going for him. He's got a hex, taunt, damage bonus, block buffs, irresistible and protected if he's got an ally with him. Would be an excellent kit for Hydra on its own, but considering he's essentially taking up two team slots, to get his full value, exactly what I just said, and that the champion you have to put in the slot is pretty much useless, except possibly, if I'm being very generous here, Fellhound. I struggle to see a use for him that makes him worth using. Exactly what I said. But yeah, that last paragraph is just pure BS. Hey guys, this champion is absolute trash, but maybe we might do something about it at a later unspecified later date. Wouldn't want to miss out on that, right? If they are true to their form, it will be a new champion announced as a quasi-fusion halfway through the main fusion, like the previous partner fusions have been, or maybe it will be a far more egregious 10x event or something, or it's just a big joke and there's no saving grace to be found. Can't have us able to make informed decisions now, can they? Not super great, or anything but for most people without relying on shard pulls then likely the options of block buff champions for hydra is ugo deliana sun wukong ostrix fenex umbral this champ brings a very a very reliable block buff no problem with affinity or poison cloud basically will never die with a mischief a uh, will uh, basically never dies because of his heal I think he's talking about the reliable block buff being uh, no problem or having no problem with affinity or poison cloud because it's not going to um, as long as you have one of these champions it can't be resisted. I I'm thinking it can go through the poison cloud too. Boost speed via aura and turn meter control, and as a chef kiss keeps mischief head permanently permanently hexed. Those are all properties that make Hydra auto teams much smoother and less likely to fail. No way is this champion useless. I would question anyone who voted as such. Yeah, sure, but I'm. there's a lot of people who are doing just fine without, like a cursed set Necmo or a cursed set Lydia is doing just fine or a cursed set Venus. You know what I mean? Pretty valid from those with three multi-billion Trunda Yumiko Nia teams. Packmaster doesn't help Trunda to do more damage and therefore useless for endgame Hydra. Yep, period, right there. For others who just started to farm Hydra or seek fully auto comfortable non-get devoured teams with 100 to 500 million damage per key, he is a must have. Ever forgetting this fancy but current dog roster, 
only situationally in interesting pack synergy. Fellhound in a curse set, Nature's Bounty also looks kind of useful. Others are going to be corpses to give bonuses, in my honest opinion. Yeah. If you have three Trunda teams built, you ain't on Reddit voting on if a champion is useless. That's not true, because I just did. Right here. So. <laughs> okay, I'm zigging while y'all homies can zag. Hydra lead brings the aura. He's gonna say everything. When your CC overlord tells you this is way better than you guys think at first glance, you heard it here first. And the snarkiest reading of this line, the legendary hound will be a Xena type event. So Polarium can harvest those CC overlords. Oh, you mean those you oh you meant content creators, not credit cards? Oops. Yeah, I'll probably get them. Partly because I lack taunt guys, and even if this guy does end up bad, or if he's bad, then I won't feel bad about building him super slow as a taunt bot with a fast pain keeper or something for 100% taunt, maybe for Shogun or something. Smart man, this one definitely has a feel where everyone is like, meh, I don't know, seems trash, and then some content creator shows you their 500 million Hydra team with him and a rare in a few weeks. It's gonna happen, you guys already know. Not me though. I'm not one of those content creators. One mainly because I'm just I'm just not one of those content creators. I don't I, I can't bring to the table what they can bring a lot better. This guy says New Fusion is gonna be a Hydra God. Hear me out. Let's see what he has to say. His A3, very good ability. That's the Blood Howl turn meter fill, along with the um, block buffs. Yes, the hex, his passive, counterattack, his passive ally attacks are nice. But don't forget the 20% damage increase, and the real deal is going to be his A2. I myself have been running an Emic Infinity comp. For everybody who doesn't know, if Taunt is up, nobody gets eaten. So if you have 100% uptime of Taunt, you can go the turn limit, and the buff doesn't get stolen. Now that's something that I forgot. It was something that I heard of, but because I don't run any unkillable comps for Hydra, I completely forgot about that. Yes. If you have 100% uptime of taunt, you can go to the turn li uh, turn limit and the buff doesn't get stolen. The trip, the tricky part with Emic is you have to have insane resist and preferably a protect set. Yeah. But the Packmaster just does an unremovable, stolable, or transfer, uh, transferable taunt buff on himself. That's good game for Hydra. Just pair him with two pain keepers, Sham, and let's say Fellhound, and you're good to go. Even more insane if the new dogs they teased are good champions as well. Mark my words. Agree, but you only need one pain, uh, pain keeper, pain keeper. <laughs> He's on a three turn cooldown. You only need one. I learned my lesson with Wixel. I'm not letting this guy get past me sure come on release the hound first typical playroom there are many paired champions but many are misses narcis and queen taurus and marishka rhodos and siffy are the exceptions to being subpar honorable mentions to venus and cupidus and he talks about all this we are due for a guaranteed void it could be 120 voids or something i can't do right now which would make the fusion a waste yeah what is this link oh that's what i just looked at might help, uh, might help, but hound is eating a be uh, easy. Uh, it could help, but a hound is eating up a spot. A spot. Best hound is maybe fell hound and provoke, and the new blessing thirty percent decrease on his a one. Uh, this guy says absolutely going for it. Orc is one of my weakest factions. Passive is spicy. Yeah. Um, faction wars. <laughs> That's kind of like the default. Nowadays, you say, uh, you know, it's kind of trash, but Faction Wars or Centranos, if you have nothing. And Centranos could be a real one, you know, because, like, I'm not... I don't really do Centranos like that, though. Like, I'm not sitting there re-gearing champions and everything. It's like, if I can do it full auto, then I'll do it. But if I don't, then I'm not going to bother. Decadent says I'm going to skip it. Not going to invest resources without knowing if it will ever come out with a decent dog to pair him with. 